Pokemon Horizons episode 66 aired a few days ago, but unfortunately I was on a vacation with my family so couldn't make a video about it. Well, not really unfortunately because I had an amazing time, but unfortunately for you guys if you were looking forward to my review, you know? But I still really want to talk about the episode now because I really, really, really loved it a whole lot, dude. Since everyone has probably watched the episode themselves by now, I won't do like a big plot summary kind of thing like normal. Let's just talk about the things that really stood out to me. And trust me, there's a a lot of them. And then at the end, we'll talk about the craziness of the next episode too. So, first of all, I really love how the episode used a battle tournament as the backdrop for the episode. It's really, really, really underrated how the writers set that up. Let me explain, okay? The battle tournament in the courtyard means that all the students and all the teachers are distracted outside the school, which gives the perfect opportunity for the explorers to strike inside the school without anyone knowing. It makes a lot of sense from the writer's perspective, it makes a lot of sense from the explorers, and it also means that the teachers don't look weak or stupid you know? It makes sense that they weren't there to protect the school. And then it also gives us the chance to have a big final celebration of the end of the arc, with some battles that we never expected, like Anne versus that Leko doppelganger from a few episodes ago. That's so random, but I love it. And hey, I guess if Anne can't beat the real Leko in a battle, then the fake Leko will have to do. In general, I really love that the doppelganger characters have become recurring in Horizons. It makes the world feel a little bit more connected, man. I love that Penny trusted Dot enough after their previous meeting to call her for help when she realised the school's system was being hacked. It feels really in character and right for Penny and Dot to be like the protectors of the school using their tech skills, you know? And talking about tech skills, I really appreciated that Agate's plan is to steal the school's data on Terrapagos. It shows that not all battles are won with brawn, you know? Sometimes they're won with brains. Because if Agate gets that data, that information, then that gives the explorers huge advantages that we don't even know of yet. And on the topic of the explorers, I really love how well thought out their plan was in this episode. Agate does the hacking, Coral patrols the school and stops intruders, Sidian handles security and secures an escape route. It shows how much thought the writers put into the villains and their individual roles as well. I really love that, man. It really makes them feel like a proper organisation with planning and everything. Liko and Roy diving into action so immediately, so fast, after Dot told him what was happening was really great. I love seeing these two being mature enough and skilled enough now to handle themselves and jump in head first. That's something that I really hoped they'd achieve, you know? And that leads us right into the main meat of the episode, the three battles. Liko vs Sidian, Dot vs Agat, Roy vs Coral. I'm going to talk about all three of these separately, but before I do, I just want to say how much I love the concept of these battles. They really chose the perfect opponents for the trio. Roy and Coral are both the fiery, over-the-top ones, plus they've battled each other before. Liko and Sidian and their Pokemon are perfect contrasts to each other, with Liko being all about brains, and Sidian being all about brawn, and Florigato being all about speed and acrobatics, and Garganical being all about tankiness and defense. They really are perfect contrasts, you know? And then Dot and Agate previously had a showdown centered around technology in the previous arc, so they get a rematch here also centered around technology. Really awesome writing, man. So, Liko vs. Sidian. First of all, it was really great that Sidian expected Liko to fail miserably against him. He hasn't seen her battling since she was much weaker before this arc even began, you know? So Liko standing up and proudly declaring that she can fight? That was such a satisfying and well-earned moment after all of her training. I loved the focus on Florigato's dodging and speed and acrobatics in this battle. She even used strategies from her battle against Grusha too, and all of that was what gave her the edge over Sidian and Garganical. But Sidian using Recover to heal Garganical and then terrestrializing, showing that he took the terrestrial training course seriously. That made Liko realize that Florigato just wouldn't be strong enough to win without terrestrializing herself. But Liko was being pulled apart because she knew that she failed her course and so she wasn't allowed to terrestrialize. But to Liko, defending Terrapagos and defending the school was all that mattered. That was her entire focus. So she terrestrialized anyway and managed to defeat Sidian with it. I love how Grusha didn't intervene despite seeing the whole battle. He allowed Liko to handle it herself as a test of her skill as a trainer, and Sidian respecting Liko enough to tell her his name as a sign of him respecting her for the first ever time? That was the icing on the cake, dude. So satisfying. And what I really love is that despite Sidian losing the battle, he did not look weak at all, you know? The fact that he can terrestrialize and is so good at it, it shows how skilled he is and that he really took his training course seriously despite being a villain. This episode made me appreciate Sidian more than ever, dude. He's a great 
villain himself, even if he doesn't have the crazy personality like Sango does. Sorry, I mean Coral. I'm trying to get used to using their English dub names now, you know? I'm really not doing a good job at it, though. And now let's talk about Dot versus Agate. What I loved about this battle is that it shows how strong Agate is, that her Medicham could stop Dot and Quaxwell without Agate even commanding it. Agate really does feel like the second Spinel sometimes, with her brains and her skill, but it also makes sense that Dot didn't put up the greatest fight ever, because her focus was on trying to break into the office and stop Agate from stealing the data. She wasn't fully focused on battling Medicham, that was just getting in the way, you know? What I loved a lot was how Tinker Tink sneaking into the office alone really, really, really shows just how much the the rising vault tacklers take the explorers seriously. Even Tinker Tink, the Pokemon who's usually crying and causing chaos like a baby, even she takes the explorers seriously. Even she jumps into action alone to try and stop them. The explorers are a real severe threat, you know? All of the rising vault tacklers, all their Pokemon, they're all on the same page. And bro, when Agate stole the data and then suddenly sent out Azatu and teleported away just like that, that went so hard, dude. The amount of aura points that Agate got in that moment, unfathomable, man. Overall, I really enjoyed Dot vs. Agate. Dot tried her best, but Agate was just too good, you know? She stole the data and dipped. Finally, the Roy vs. Coral segment. So unfortunately, this battle was given the least focus out of all three. All we really saw was Fuecoco and Glalie clashing their attacks, and Fuecoco unleashing his full power to defeat Glalie. If I'm honest, though, I'm okay with it, because while there wasn't really any focus on the battle, there was a lot of great focus on before the battle. You see, Roy vs. Coral started inside the art room in the school, but Roy quickly realized that if the battle continued here, they'd accidentally destroy all of the students' artwork on the walls. So Roy showed his brain power, and and also his heart and his respect for art by so effortlessly maneuvering the battle to outside the school. Because there he could go all out with his attacks without worrying about the damage to the school, you know? Seeing Roy's IQ here, seeing him use his brain power, that really made up for the battle being so short. It was a real testament to who Roy is as a person. And I also found Coral's reaction to Glalie being knocked out by Fuecoco to be absolutely hilarious. The way she shaked Glalie and screamed of him to wake up and battle more. So funny, dude. And of course, Sidian had to be like her big brother again and save her. I really love their bond, I really do. So, after all the chaos is over and the explorers have fled, Grusha tells Zaliko that he totally misjudged her. He sees now that she's the kind of trainer whose true strength shines through when she fights to protect other people, like how she fought to protect Terrapagos and the school today. So he tells her that now she's passed her Terrastal training course, and Liko is absolutely shocked. I've seen a lot of people criticizing this and saying it's a bit of a cop-out, with Liko being given a pity pass or whatever, and I could not disagree more, dude. It actually makes me kind of sad that people feel that way. To me, Grusha passing Liko in this way feels so perfect. If you think back to Liko and Grusha's previous battle, the whole episode was about Grusha's character being fully focused on results, being fully focused on winning, being what matters, and that's why he failed Liko originally, because she didn't get results. She didn't win. But here, Liko showed Grusha the kind of trainer that she truly is. The kind who's fully focused on protecting other people. And she showed him that she does get results in battling in the way that's true to her. She protected Terrapagos. She protected the school. She won. She got the results that she wanted by battling in the way that's true to her. So Grusha, being fully focused on results, he realized that Liko does get the results that she wants. And he used that to pass her on her terrestrial training course. That's so well written, man. It shows how much the writers have really thought deep into Grusha and Liko's character traits. It doesn't diminish either of them. It's completely true to their characters, you know? So for me, I really loved this. I really, really, really did. Finally, it healed my heart seeing Penny thanking Dot for her help in protecting the school despite Agate succeeding in stealing the data. Dot even blushed a little. Don't know what that means, dude. And Roy and Dot celebrating Liko passing her terrestrial training course was really sweet, man. The episode ended with the next battle of the tournament being announced. Liko versus Roy. The battle we've waited 60 episodes for, baby! So hype, dude! The preview trailer for the next episode showed everyone will be watching the battle. All the gym leaders, the Elite Four, their friends, the whole school. Like, really, everyone is here. And it's a 2v2 battle too, including Florigato, Fuecoco, Kilowatt, Thrill, Hatrim. I'm so excited, man! The last time Liko and Roy battled, they were both newbies and weaklings. So seeing how far they've developed since then will be really hype, you know? It's pretty obvious that Roy's Fuecoco 
Foycoco is going to evolve into Crocolore during this battle, and I can't think of a better time for that to happen. Foycoco deserves it after all of his wins and all of his training. He deserves to evolve in front of everyone that matters to him. He's going to be so happy, man, and I'm going to be even happier. Personally, I really hope that Roy wins the battle, and that's because Aliko won the previous time they battled. I think it'd be pretty sweet if Aliko won their first battle, Roy wins their second battle now, and then in a potential final battle at the end of the series, that could end up in a draw with Liko and Roy being equals. That'd be perfect, man. In the preview trailer, we also saw that Arvin is finally making his debut, and that has me so hyped, dude. Arvin was my favourite character and my favourite storyline from the Scarlet and Violet games, so I'm really glad he's not being forgotten about. Personally, I don't think he'll have too much focus in the episode. I think he'll just briefly be introduced and watch the battle, but I think this is set up for Arvin having a way bigger appearance later in the series. Maybe when Horizons handles Maridon and Karidon. Let me know your thoughts on Pokemon Horizons episode 66 below. Did you love it as much as I did? To me it felt perfect and I'm really proud of our heroes for how far they've come. I also can't wait for Liko vs Roy in the next episode too. Who do you want to win between them? Be sure to join our Discord server if you haven't already, the link is in the description. We're currently hosting a rising Volt Tacklers vs the Explorers event in there and you get to choose your team and take a side and everything man, it's a lot of fun. Finally, be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed, that helps me out a lot. And on that note, thank you all so much for watching, and best wishes until we meet again.